been a little while since we did our last sort of monthly blog we, we, with all the days and bits that have come in the way. I've just come back from Madeira from a family holiday, so i uh, tried to get a bit of a suntan. And uh, anyway, it's sort of mid-October now. Uh, it's cool enough, as you probably imagine uh, and seen. Uh, it's a bit of a shock for me because it's 26 degrees over in Madeira where I've just been and then I've got back and it suddenly feels a little bit like winter. Anyway, at the moment, me and the guys, there's uh, two of my mates from ProLogic, we popped down to uh, Bromsgrove's answer to uh, the Orient. It's a late tardy big, it's a reservoir actually. It's part of a canal system, it's a top-up canal system, it's a syndicate. And our friend Russ Guys uh, runs the syndicate and he's kind of let us come down for a guest session. And uh, there was a few guys on, it's been fishing quite well actually. There's been some nice fish out recently. And the fish seem to be coming from a sort of little deeper triangle of water that's way in the middle there. And we can't get near it and we don't want to crowd the regulars that are the members. So we've took a punt and we've come somewhere where we're actually sat is normally un under eight feet of water. So it's, it's, you know, it's being drained down while there's some work being done on the dam. And uh, so as I say, we're normally eight feet of water would be above our heads here. So where we're fishing now, we're lucky to get six feet, but we're in the teeth of the wind. It's a south uh, westerly or a southerly, and it's gusting around a bit. And we've, we took a bit of a gamble. We're fishing relatively shallow water for this place. And uh, it's been doing fish in the dark and in the early hours of the morning at first light. So we've took our time getting sorted out and uh, we're going to do 48 hours. Hopefully we'll have something to show you and uh, anything else that crops up, I'll, I'll mention. We're 24 hours in now and uh, Ed from ProLogic joined us last night and uh, Richard was with us so there's four of us on this small bank so it wasn't the best of sort of situations to try and uh, catch something but uh, we, we were quite confident even though we, we had a lot of lines in a short area more than you would want so we, we had a, a curry last night and some beers and uh, it was great we had a good old chat and a laugh like we do and then uh, Richard was away about eight o'clock in the evening in the dark and he had uh, a 21, 21 and a half, real nice plated scaly mirror, uh, beautiful little fish. So uh, that was the result. Uh, we did kind of expect it because the wind had been hacking down here all day and uh, yeah, it got warm last night and we expected that we would get more, but nothing's happened. And uh, this morning it's flat calm. Uh, the wind had completely abated and uh, there's a few fizzers, a few silverfish showing. But the lake's gone very quiet, so uh, we've got another night, so we've, we've still got a chance to retrieve it. But I don't like being in this position and it's a, it's a water I really don't know anything about. Apart from the fact it's very deep in a lot of it and uh, quite featureless really. And uh, so, you know, you, you're always in a quandary about what bait to use, uh, even though you know that um, you know, the bait you've got works, you, there's certain preferences that happen on waters like this where it's big and featureless and there's hot spots that always occur on every water so we don't know them so we, we're fishing a bit blind really but uh, you never know, see what happens tonight. Night. Me and uh, 
my mate got uh, breamed a little bit. We've had a uh, bit of a broken sleep. Uh, the bream were active as soon as we put any kind of pellet in here, in bags or anything, bream are on you. Also smaller baits, so I can see why the guys are using big baits on it. Anyway, uh, Ben had to nip back to the van and get something, and he missed the uh, the uh, carp run that I had just before it got white. And uh, we've not got playing footage, but we've got the uh, end result. So I'll show you that, it's a 26 and a half pound common. Absolute beauty, mint condition. Oops. Oh, don't you just love it? There we go. Lovely fish in here. An absolute scale perfect. Not a mark on it. So I'm quite pleased with that one. First tidy big uh, carp for old FW. It's giving me a good slapping as well. So Morning fellas uh, and ladies, I suppose there's more women getting into carp fishing now, which is great, so uh, must be politically correct. So uh, yeah, listen, what, what I was going to mention is uh, I had a, uh, that fish just just before it got light this morning, it was 26 and a half, so that was a nice result really. Uh, what happened was, was getting breamed and I had a bait switch, I was using boilies. I had a mixture of like food baits with uh, PVA mesh bags with the uh, either full 16 millis in or crumb ones or halves, just a bit of a mixture in the bag. And I uh, was, was getting breamed and I put an element of uh, two and three mil pellet in there as well. So the bream were getting a right nuisance and uh, we'd heard that some of the regulars on this lake use baits up to like 28 mil and stuff to avoid them. But uh, we soon found out why. Anyway, I, when I'm fishing open water, I tend to favour the long shank hooks. I've, I've gone on about it over many years uh, of just how effective they are at, you know, hooking fish. Uh, I wouldn't use them in snags or, you know, fishing anywhere where you've got weed beds or anything. But open water, and this is relatively clear here, there's, there's no weed. Virtually, you know, no problems like that. So I switched from my standard go-to uh, curve hooks to the long shanks. Just in case some, some might have been getting away with it. And... Uh, just with a blow back rig on and then still caught bream but I dropped the the pellet out of the equation decided to switch to a, a tiger nut hook bait just to try and stop the bream from getting involved and uh, I used boilies in the mesh bag a lot of people think that's a bit unusual that using a, a tiger nut hook bait with boilies but it really isn't I've caught a lot of fish doing that over the years uh, in fact I've I, you baiting up with one particular type of bait and using a different hook bait is quite a good tactic because a lot of people always want to match the hook bait to the freebies and sometimes it's a bit like the old cherry on the cake scenario an alternative hook bait can be quite uh, evocative and interesting to the fish so it worked anyway so i got the bite on that it's nothing you know no, nothing dramatic it's just that try to avoid the brain change the tigers but use the boilies in the bag, it worked. So uh, I was using that fruit smoothie again, the bait that I've been baiting up with. Uh, so it's worked and uh, quite pleased with that. Anyway, still got a bit of time, so we'll see if I can sneak one out. We've got, I think, three hours left and uh, see what happens.
happy days. What's what's just happened is uh, we're, we're thinking of a slow pack up. We're going to get off about dinner time, one o'clock, and we realised from talking to the lads in the syndicate that uh, they've been having them up to about 11ish. So we thought we'll, we'll drag it out as long as we can. And uh, I'd read on the rod that I had the fish on this morning, uh, Tiger Nuts with the, the 16 mil fruit smoothie in it again. And off it's trundled. Bit of a weird little bite, and I thought, oh, maybe it's a bream. And then as soon as I pulled into it, I thought, oh, this feels a bit decent. And then it started going. And uh, yeah, it was this rascal, 28.2. Beautiful fish. Check this out. So, uh, with uh, old tardy big, beautiful linears. I don't know what you reckon, but I reckon that's an absolute peach. It's dead chuff with it, it's great. So, uh, thanks to Russ guys for letting us come over, by the way. Good old mate of mine. He's allowed us to come as guests, so thanks Russ. And thanks to the other members in the syndicate. So, uh, there we go. So, tiger nut hook bait with boilies in the bag. Unusual combination, but worth a try if you've never tried it and you're getting bream problems. There we go. <laughs> Cracker. Well, the session's uh, come to an end now. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon, so we've done 48 hours. And uh, yeah, so it was, I consider that a success really. Didn't really expect much because we were, you know, a bit in the dark about what goes on here and the tactics and, you know, the brain problem was much bigger than we thought. So we got round it and worked round it and it's worked out nice. And uh, highlight of the trip for me was that linear at 28. I mean, what a fish, beautiful. It doesn't matter where you catch those in the world. Size is a little bit immaterial as well, but beautiful fish. And uh, credit to the guys that are in the syndicate as well. They're all immaculate fish, so uh, well done you lot. And uh, I'll see you soon for the next adventure. And uh, in the meantime, be lucky and take it easy and look out for the ProLogic stuff that we're introducing as we go along.